Today we're going to be looking at solving radical equations. Whenever you solve radical equations here, you have to square both sides to solve. Here's one issue that can arise. Let's say we start off with the equation x equals to 5. If I were to square both sides of this equation, we would get x squared equals 25. Now if I went ahead and solved for this directly, forgetting my original equation, and I were to solve x squared equals 25, we would have two roots. One would be 5, the other would be negative 5. However, one of these does not work. The negative 5 obviously doesn't satisfy the top equation. So whenever you square both sides of an equation, you introduce the possibility of an extraneous root. So now let's focus our attention on number 1. So I'm going to solve this radical equation. The technique is to isolate the radical. So in this case here, we're going to isolate the square root of x plus 4. After isolating for the square root of x plus 4, we now square both sides. Solving for x, we get x equals 77. We can now check this in the original equation, ensuring it does satisfy it. Checking this in the original equation, we get. And you'll notice by checking this in the original equation, we notice if we substitute that 77 into the left-hand side, we get 0. And the right-hand side is obviously always equal to 0. So we found the solution to this system. And this has no extraneous roots. So the solution to this system is 77 with no extraneous roots. Let's look at another. So for the next problem here, the same idea, you want to isolate the radical. We've already isolated for it, so I'm going to square both sides. After squaring both sides, we want to solve for x. We're going to bring everything to one side. Doing that, we get, after bringing everything to one side, go ahead and factor out the minus 3 here, in which case we get. Factor out that minus 3, we're left with an x squared minus 8 inside, and then we can go ahead and do difference of squares. Solving for x, we end up getting x equals plus or minus the square root of 8. Now again, we've got two answers here. We have to check to see whether we do have any extraneous roots. So let's go ahead and check that. Go ahead and checking x equals root of 8 into the equation. We notice the left-hand side does equal to the right-hand side. However, when checking this equation for x equals negative 8, we end up getting the left-hand side is 2 root 8. However, the right-hand side is negative 2 root 8. Therefore, what we have here is an extraneous root. So now, with the extraneous root at negative root 8, the answer is just root 8 for this equation. Let's take a look at another question. For the next equation, the same strategy, you want to square both sides. So squaring both sides, we get, bringing everything to one side, we get 5x minus 2 equals 0. And solving for x, we get x equals 2 fifths. Now we want to go ahead and check 2 fifths into our equation. Checking our solution in our equation, we find the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So this is the solution to this radical equation. Let's take a look at another. So in the next equation here, we have three roots we want to solve. So the strategy for something like this would be to isolate one of the radicals and then square both sides. So let's go ahead and choosing this at arbitrary, I'm going to go ahead and isolate for the square root of 3x minus 5. Isolating for the square root of 3x minus 5, I'm now going to square both sides. You'll notice here when we square both sides, you square the first, which gives you 5x plus 1. First times second times 2. And then squaring the last term, we lose the root on the x plus 1. Let's go ahead and collect like terms and bring all the non-radical terms to one side. You'll notice collecting like terms on the right-hand side, I get uh, 6x plus 2. And bringing that over and subtracting, we get negative 3x minus 7 is going to be negative 2 times the product of these two radicals. So now, once again, we're essentially isolated for one radical here because these can both be put under the same root. So I'm going to go ahead and square both sides again. And doing so, we get... So now after squaring both sides, I get 9x squared plus 42x plus 49. And then we're left with this term here. Uh, now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to distribute this and then bring everything to one side and simplify. So now you notice here, uh, by expanded out the product of these binomials, I then simplified and distributed on the right-hand side. Now we've got two quadratics on the left and right equating each other. Bring this all to one side. Hopefully we can factor it or use the quadratic equation. So bringing this quadratic all to one side, we get negative 11x squared plus 18x plus 45. Just multiply across by a minus 1 here. I'm going to go ahead and solve this using charting. Uh, you can do decomposition as well. Um, however, with the large a and c values, I think charting is a little easier. If you haven't seen charting, I'll link that in the top right-hand corner. So using charting, we end up getting... So we end up getting uh, the following two columns here. Notice the product of the diagonals is negative 18. And in which case here, this will factor into. And we end up getting two values of x. x equals 3 and negative 15 over 11. So let's go ahead and check these in our original equation and see if we have any extraneous roots. 
Checking x equals to 3 in the left-hand side and right-hand side, you'll see here that we end up getting 4 for the left-hand side and 4 for the right-hand side. Therefore, x equals to 3 is a solution. Let's check the other. Checking x equals negative 15 over 11 in the left-hand side of the equation, we immediately find the function is undefined on the left-hand side. So in this case here, we have a negative under the square root both for both terms, actually. And because of that, the equation is undefined at x equals negative 15 over 11. Therefore, this is an extraneous root. And therefore, the answer to this equation is x equals 3. That concludes today's lesson on solving radical equations. Thank you.